what up what up what up hi you guys welcome to my channel um so this is going to be my very 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 first story time i'm going to call it tea time because y'all going to learn all my tea like y'all going to hear it all if you don't know me you're about to know me if you do know me you still gonna get to know me because you don't really know me you think you know me but you don't um i wanted to keep it kind of light on the first story just because I've been through some really deep toxic shit and um, I didn't want to jump into it too heavy. So a lot of the things that I'm going to tell you happened within the time frame of like 10 years ago. Um, now there is stuff that happened to me recently like within the last three to five years and we'll get to that. But I really want to touch base on the things that happened about 10 to maybe eight years ago. Um, that's when things for me and my life dramatically changed. It is. It, it actually explains how I am today and who I am today and my struggles today. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of struggle. I mean, I'm doing a lot better than what I was. My life is good. I, I love my life. But I was in a very toxic, dark place. It had a lot to do with my relationship. That relationship completely changed my whole life. And that's the whole reason why I even started this channel, was to talk about it and to bring awareness to the effects, the aftermath effects that it had on me. It has on me. And it has. Ha so, um, I'm not going to get into anything heavy. We're going to start with some really wild stuff. Your girl used to be wild. Anybody who knew me back then knows that I was. Um, so, this took place about over 10 years ago. I'm 36. So, I was like 20 maybe going on 24 at the time um I work in the dental field now and I've been doing it for the last 14 years but there was a time where I had to leave and like I said we'll get to that later on of of why I left and like all this shit that happened in between but there was a time of frame where I had to leave and I've been a cocktail waitress I've been a stripper I've been a bartender um those were always like my go-to hustles and I did it since I was like 18. And so I got into cocktail waitressing at a few strip clubs downtown. Now, I hadn't been in the stripping game in for, for years. I was like 19, 18 the last time I had worked at a strip club. And I was a stripper. I started as a door host and then I became a stripper. Um, the owner kind of convinced me. So, but it was very... It was just like a side thing like i was working during the day and i was doing that but that was something that i did when i was younger and really didn't interest me later on once i found my career my path and things were going great when i was like i said about 23 24 i was struggling i was going through some shit. i was completely lost you guys it, my relationship was so fucking toxic it's not even funny and um so i got back into i got back into working at a strip club. I was a cocktail waitress. So I'm, wa I'm waitressing at a club called Onyx. So I live in Dallas, Texas, just in case I forgot to tell you. I live in Dallas, Texas, and there's a club called Onyx. And I was cocktail waitressing there. Um, I was only there for about a week or two, maybe. And sometimes I would maybe strip, but not really. I would do it like on Friday or Saturday nights. The owner was like the last owner trying to get me to do it again and I'm like look I'm older now even though I was very young I felt older and I'm like look I don't it's not really something I'm interested in I'm only doing this right now to to get back on my feet um so there was a guy that used to come in all the time all the time I'm not going to use his real name um like I said everybody's gonna have code names so his code name is going to be pimp because that's exactly what he was I had never ran into a pimp before. I didn't even know what a pimp was. I mean, I know what a pimp was, but I had never ran into a pimp before. I thought pimps, you know, in my eyes was like Cat Williams. You know, I'm thinking like the pressed hair, the the suede outfit, you know, the cute little, you know, hat that he had, you know, the way he walked with a, you know, Cat Williams. That's That was my representation of a pimp. You know, never even, I didn't, like, they were like mythical creatures for me like who would have thought i ever would run into one right so but i didn't know that back then so he comes in the guy looks 
he he's cute like i ain't gonna lie like i like brothers anybody who knows me knows i like brothers i date brothers i i'm engaged to a brother so i like brothers and he was this light-skinned um you know brother he looked like soldier boy like he was he was fine like he was hot and he would come in all the time and he would like get some of the girls he would sit in like a vip section there was like a vip section and he would sit up there and that's where he would be all night he would get about maybe two or three girls to go sit with him and he would give them like five hundred dollars just to sit with them for you know a few hours or whatever it was easy money very easy money and he didn't want nothing he just wanted your undivided attention so he comes in he came in he comes in like maybe three or four times a night and he would always get like i said two or three girls all the girls loved it when he came in and he always was really flashy you know he had his gucci on his prada he was just really nice he was always like he had stacks of bread like stacks like mrs baird's bread type of shit like the shit was fucking thick and like hundreds i'm not talking like once like hundreds and he was always flashing it around um he was very cocky very arrogant so one night he requests me to go and sit with him and i'm like i'm a waitress i'm just waitressing and he's like no i would like for you to come and like you know, you don't have to do anything, just sit with me. So I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. So I go sit with them and we're chilling, we're talking. And he's like showing his money and he's flashing, being flashy. And he says, um, yeah, you know, I, you could work with me. I can make you a lot of money. And, you know, a lot of the girls here, they want to work with me. And, you know, I would take care of them and I would help them get money. Like he's trying to, he's trying to talk himself up, right? And I don't know what he's talking about, seriously. I'm just sitting there like, are you like a promoter? Are you like a producer? Are you like a manager of like another club? Like, I didn't really understand. The girls really weren't explaining what he was. I know that they knew that he was a pimp, but I mean, I know they had to know. They had to know. How did they not, how could they not know? Because every time he came in, the, they went fucking wild for him. And so I'm just like, well, um, I don't understand, but um, I'm only doing this right now part-time. Like, I'm trying to get back on my feet and, you know, have kids and stuff. I was with, we're going to give, oh, we need to codename my baby daddy because my baby daddy, what, this was the crazy relationship I was in, the, the really, really wild relationship I was in. Um, we're going to nickname him, um, or we're not nicknaming him, but his codename is going to be Ivan. Ivan. Yeah, you're gonna learn all about Ivan in my in my stories. He's like, well, it's cool. Like, just know that I wanna work with you. I think you have lots of potential. And I'm like, mm, potential? I'm like, what does that mean? You know, I don't I don't know. Uh, guys, I'm 24. I'm 20 fucking four. I have. I don't even really want to be working at the strip club anymore. I was past that. I was, I had a career. I work in the dental field. I've been doing it for the last 14 years. So why? Well, now I have, but back then I was new, but still like, why would I want to go into, I worked really hard to, to have a career. Why would I want to go backwards? But like I said, I was really lost. I was going through a lot of stuff. So I, I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, if I can make more money and I can get out of my situation faster, better, you know, the better, the, that's, good for me it's good for my family the next night he comes in and he requested I go sit in his section again and I'm just like okay cool you know he's he's giving me money while I'm sitting in there so it's not a big deal the owner really doesn't care that I'm not on the floor so he's like go please him like they're really they pull out the red carpet for this guy because he's a big spender when he comes in and he brings his entourage and they like throwing money and shit you know so I see why you know why he's so attractive to the girls like he's good looking he got bread he's willing to spend and supposedly he represents some of these girls well he finally like i said the next night he comes in and he he has me go sit with him and he's like i really like to take you to this place tomorrow where you know i can show you around i can talk to you about the potential of you making more money you know you don't you don't belong here and i'm just like okay like sounds good right sounds good so I'm like all right so he's like after work come to my um come with me I want to show you some things so there was a girl that was with him 
that um, I noticed that was a stripper at the strip club that I was working at. So I don't remember her name, but she was a really pretty like yellow bone um, black chick, like really pretty. We'll call her pink because she always wore pink and she was super, super, super sweet. Looking back, she was awful, super, super, super naive. I don't even remember how old she was. I think she was a lot younger than me though. She had a baby too. And so I meet him after work. I go to his car, he drives, he drives like a Jaguar and he's like, get in. So I'm like, look, I gotta be home. Like my baby daddy don't play. He knows I work here, but I can't stay long. Like, I'm just gonna go see what it is you're offering. He takes me to his town home in Dallas, in Oak Cliff to be exact. Oak Cliff is like the ghetto, in case you don't know. It's it's pretty ghetto. There are parts where are okay. I'm from Oak Cliff, so it really doesn't bother me parts of Oak Cliff, but there are parts where there where I would not go. And this place was okay. It wasn't bad. And he had a nice town home. And so he took me to his town home and we walk in and it is, it's a really nice town home. But he didn't have any furniture like not even a fold-out chair to sit down in and I'm just like okay well you got a nice townhome but you don't have no furniture yeah he takes me upstairs and that's probably the only room that had furniture it and it was very minimal it was like a nightstand a mattress on the floor and then he had like his clothes and his shoes and on his wall, there was like, you know how guys put like their stupid fucking boxes on the, on the wall, like fucking Foot Locker. They got their shoes on top of their shoe boxes, like a display at Foot Locker. Yeah, I can't stand that. If you do that, I mean, no offense. That's your prerogative. But, um, so yeah, he had that in his room and he's pulling out his Gucci. He's pulling out his Prada. He's trying to show me like, what he has and I'm thinking yeah that's all good and gravy baby but you ain't got no furniture you got a mattress on the floor boo boo like what are you really trying to offer me like is this supposed to impress me like I don't understand so I'm like okay yeah this is great awesome and he's like yeah you can live here with your kids and I'll take care of you and I'm like but you don't have any furniture dude you got no furniture anyway so I am like okay well sorry my nose itches so I'm like, okay, well, uh, good, cool, whatever, awesome. I so before I leave, he's like, I have something for you. And he gives me a box and it has a phone in it. This is not like a smartphone. This is like a, those old ass, like a phone that you get, like if you sign up with like Metro PCS or Cricket, like they give you that free phone, like that $30 phone that you got to like, text message like a game boy you know what i mean like block letters and shit numbers um yeah he gave me that type of phone he's like here i bought you a phone you don't have a cell phone and uh, he's like i need to get in touch with you and i'm like oh okay cool thanks whatever so i leave and i don't even really take the phone out of the box i get home and my of course ivan is sus already because he's like you're home later than usual what happened only reason why I didn't run it by him was because I didn't know what this guy was trying to do. I really honestly thought, okay, he's going to probably take me to like a new club where I can make more money or he has another job that he's going to introduce me to. Yeah, he did. And I'm just thinking, okay, well, it's, um, I, I really wanted to get all the facts together before I said anything to him because Ivan was extremely, extremely jealous. He was jealous. He was toxic, like I said. Trust me. You'll learn about him. So I'm just like, yeah, well, you know, I stayed late or whatever. And he's like, you got a phone? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I thought I'd buy it because I need it. You know, I am working late now and at night. And so you need to get in touch with me, you know, blah, blah, blah. Give him some bullshit story. And so he's like, okay, cool, whatever. He, he, he was still sus, I could tell, but he didn't really dig into it too much. Next night, I go to work and Pimp shows up. He's like, I'm walking into the club and he's already there. And I know he's there because he had texted me that, that day. He's like, hey, 
you're not working the club tonight. I'm going to take you somewhere else. And I'm like, okay. So I show up. He's like still dressed up nice. So I'm like, okay. So I, I dress up like as if I am going to go work at the club. So I go, I show up and he's in the parking lot. And he's like, um, come with me, get in the car. We're going to go. I'm going to show you um, what you're going to be doing. So I'm like, okay, cool. And he's like, you ready to start tonight? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Money. Like I need some money. Like, yes, let's do it. So we're driving. Now, those who live in Dallas, maybe you know, maybe you don't know, but I'm about to school you. Off of 35 and maybe Royal Lane, there is, I think it's Royal Lane. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I apologize. Off of 35 and I think Royal Lane, um, there's a spa called King Spa. And it's, it's a nice spa. It's nice. And they do massages and they have like jacuzzis and like pools and stuff like that and saunas. And it's a, it's a legit spa. But around that place, they have other massage parlors, but they're not you're gonna have a grand old, you're gonna have a pretty awesome massage. And why I know that these places existed was because of this night. I show up with him, I'm in his passenger seat. Pinky is not with us. And I asked, where, did, where was she? He's like, oh, she's already there. And I'm like, okay. There's like some where, they look like warehouses, like little storage places slash warehouse places I don't know where like people go and like maybe have a business where they spray your car or they do alarms or they do like stereo systems you know what I mean right like or where they can go and like spray paint your car you know what I mean um so they, that's what they look like and it's getting late it's like in the evening time the sun's going down and I noticed like little open signs above some of these places and I'm thinking like, what the fuck? Like, I'm about to be a forklift driver? Like, where's this fool taking me? Like, I don't understand where I'm at. I don't understand what I'm about to be doing. He's not explaining anything. I seriously have no idea what I'm about to walk into. He pulls up and he's like, I want you to meet the owner. So the owner comes out and he's like this Asian guy. He's like maybe in his late thirties. And he doesn't have an accent or anything. He has like an American accent. And he walks out and he's like, oh yeah, she's going to do great. And I'm like, yo, like, okay. Like he, he thinks I'm cute, right? I'm cute. I'm about to make some money. So I'm all excited and I'm just thinking like, wow, like this is, I don't know what this is, but I'm about to make some money. So we walk in and there's literally like a little door that you bypass and there's like cameras. And then they buzz you in and then you go walk in and it's like a big room. Like there's nothing in this room. It's just like a room, like a dark littered room. And then there's like a little kitchen in the back. It's like a little apartment, seriously, like a little kitchen in the, or like a little house, like a little kitchen in the back. And then there's these rooms on this side and then there's rooms on this side. And in those rooms, they're like our beds. They're like, they're like bedrooms. They're like, they have beds and dressers and there's girls in there, like all types of girls, like Asian, black, Mexican, white, all these girls, just like, like they have their own rooms. But the rooms on this side, there's nothing in there but like a massage table. And so he's showing me around and I start, it starts to kind of click. Am I at a fucking brothel? Is this like a whorehouse? Holy shit. So I'm scared shitless. Like I'm shaking. I'm so scared because I just agreed to come and work for this guy. And I felt stupid. Like I felt so stupid. He's like, when you're done, you're not going to leave till about six o'clock and you're going to give me your money. And I'm like, okay, it, it already, like, I, I already, alarm's going off. I already know, like, he's a pimp. I'm being pimped out. Like, this is fucking nuts. 
So he's trying to leave and I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm not ready. You said I could start when I was ready, right? Like, I'm not ready. Like, I, this is a lot and I'm, maybe I'm just being naive, but I, I'm not ready. You just introduced me something, introduced me to something and I'm, I'm scared and I'm nervous. So will you just like give me some time? I didn't want time, you guys. I just wanted to get the fuck out of there because I was, I was scared. And I thought he was going to get mad. I thought he was going to say no. And that was going to be really, really fucked up if he did. But he didn't. I got lucky. And he's like, no, I understand. Just calm down. He's like, you're nervous. I get it. He's like, let's just take our time. He's like, in the meantime, I don't want you working at this strip club. I want you to work at this other strip club. And I'm like, oh, well, I thought you said I didn't have to do this no more. And he's like, well, you still have to, if you come here and you're not making any money, I still have to make money off you. And I'm just like, okay. So he takes me around the rest of the night to go apply to different clubs. I think there's like Spearmint Rhino. Is that what it's called? Spearmint Rhino? Yeah. And then um, Dallas Gentlemen's and then I think Baby Dolls. And there's another club out there. I can't remember the name of it, but it's 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 a really nice upscale club. He's like, I want you to work at the upscale club. Dallas Gentlemen's is not really upscale, but um, the nicer strip clubs. He wanted me there. And so I applied to those places. Um, they told me to come back the next day to talk to the managers because it was during working hours, of course. So I'm just like, okay. Um, and I convinced him to let me go home. I go home and I just think, you know what? I'm going to just go to work tomorrow and just tell him I'm not interested. Like, I'm not gonna do this. Like, you can't force me to do this. So I don't wanna do it. Um, Yeah, it's not gonna happen. He's blowing my fucking phone up, like calling, texting, like, like, I need you to answer when I'm calling you. I need you to, you know, answer me when I'm texting you. And he's just like, I turned the phone off. Like, I just turned it off. I just, baby daddy Ivan is like, what's going on? Like, something's going on. You're acting funny. You don't ever act like this. Like, what's, what's going on? And I'm still like, I'm so scared to tell him, you guys. Like, because he's nuts. My fucking baby daddy is nuts. And I'm like, um nothing it's nothing like they didn't need me tonight like I'll go tomorrow and he's like okay next night I go to work I go to work I don't answer the phone I actually repackaged it back into the box and I'm just like I'm giving him his phone back like I'm cutting ties with him I'm no nah, fuck this I go back to the club and I'm working well I saw a little pinky you know she's there and she's she approaches me in the back and she's like yo like pimp has been trying to get a hold of you like he's furious and i'm like well sorry like i'm not interested and she flat out looks me in my face and says well you took a phone and i'm like that little fucking game boy bullshit ass phone like so what like i actually have it with me he can take that shit back and she's like no it doesn't matter like he owns you i'm like no you don't go you don't know and so we're going back and forth. We're going back and forth. So I know she's texting him some shit, right? So I'm just thinking like, okay, I, I'll, I'll deal with this when the time comes. Let me just get through my shift. So I get through my shift. I work. I'm leaving. She follows me. She's following me. So we walk to my car and guess who's on my car? Him. Pimp, right? So he's there. He's like cussing me out, dude. Like he's going off on me. He's just like yelling screaming cussing and i was just like what we get into an altercation i'm trying to explain to him that i'm not interested like this is not like no and he's trying to be like well how did how could you not know M motherfucker i'm 24 years old you didn't really explain anything to me you don't even look like cat williams i know that sounds stereotypical but i mean that's the only person i can know that's a fucking vamp like I don't know a pimp. They don't walk around with pimp on them. I know they don't. So I'm just like, well, I don't know. Like, I just, I look, what, what does it matter? I'm not interested. Like, I'm, this is not 
what I'm trying to do. Take your take your Game Boy back and and we calling it even. Like we done. Yo, this guy throws me against my car. And he's like threatening me, like, no, you're going to work for me. I already own you. And then he reaches into my little stripper bag, or I keep saying my stripper bag. Damn it, it's not my stripper bag. My little like I have like um like a little, you know, like this. I still carry one around with my clothes and shit with makeup and stuff. So I have like a um just like a bag with like clothes and makeup and stuff like that. And inside that bag I have a um you know Crown Royal liquor bottles, the purple the purple bags that they put around the bottles. Okay, that's I had money in there like from tips and stuff like that for the end of the night. Well, he reaches in there and he pulls it out. And he's like, that's mine. And he opens the door. He opens my car door. And he throws the phone in the passenger seat. And he's like, you need to answer the phone. You need to answer the phone when I call or when I text you. And don't let this happen again. And he walks away. I'm like shaking because I'm scared. I'm like, yo, like, he knows what I drive. He knows where I work. What am I gonna do? I have no choice but to go home and tell crazy baby daddy Ivan. Like, I don't have a choice. I just got robbed. So I'm telling, you know, I go home. I had to work up courage too. So I go home and I'm telling him, or I tell him what happened. He like went the fuck off. He's like pissed off, angry, screaming, cussing we getting into it like we going back and forth i'm just like yo like um and he's like how did you not know and i'm like dude like i didn't know okay i don't know what to tell you i'm scared now you know he robbed me now what you know now what remember i told you like my life at the time was really 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 fucked up my relationship my life just me my mindset i was toxic i was around toxic people i just was not in a good place so i said well he's always walking around with like these stacks of cash flashing it everywhere he robbed me why don't we rob him I know don't judge me okay please please if there's one thing that i will say i am still is vengeful i'm like i'm not gonna lie I'm, I'm extremely vengeful and petty when i get screwed over really 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 harshly and i felt very very much screwed over so baby daddy ivan he ain't working he ain't making no bread he in the unemployment line so he's like yeah that's let's, there's a taco cabana on this corner that's by his townhome I know he eats there very often, and I know he meets people there very often. Behind that Taco Cabana, there are some apartments. I have the idea that I'm gonna call him and I'm gonna be like, yo, I have a girl that's interested in working for you. Will you meet us at this Taco Cabana? She lives in those apartments behind the Taco Cabana, so we're gonna walk to the Taco Cabana and make him wait and pretend like we're walking. I said, and then you, I'm gonna describe him to you and you're going to go in and i guess wait for him i don't know how he was going to do it i was like but i'll give you a description of his car i'll give you a description of what he looks like and just know that this is him and this is how much money he usually has on him he always carried around a huge lot of cash so my baby daddy's like all right cool so i get pimp on the phone and at the time um ivan's mom was around and I gave her the phone and I told her just to pretend that, you know, she was this girl that was interested and she did a great job. She did. She sounded like a little girl. Anyway, she was toxic too. So it was not that hard to convince her. So she's on the phone with him like, oh yeah, like I really want to, um, you know, work for you. And, you know, 
not Oscar award winning, but it'll do. So she's on the phone with him talking. I'm on the phone with baby daddy Ivan, like, you know, giving him descriptions, blah, 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 blah. We're convincing him on this end to meet us at the Taco Cabana. I'm, you know, trying to navigate crazy baby daddy because he's like screaming at me and shit still. I can tell when Pimp, well, Pimp is already at the Taco Cabana. He falls for the story. He gets there, he's waiting, and I'm walking around outside. Like, I'm in my driveway, and I'm walking around the car, so that way you can hear that, like, I'm kind of walking. Like, it sounds like I'm walking to the Taco Cabana. He's like, where are you at? I'm like, oh, we're walking. Like, it's taking us a while, blah, 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 blah. And... So he's like talking to me like, okay, well, this is what we're going to do for the new girl, blah, 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 blah. And then he pauses. So I can tell when he sees Ivan and his friends. The phone gets really quiet. And then he goes, this is, this is what you, this is what you're doing right now? Like, are you really about to pull this on me right now? And he's like, Wow wow and i'm just like huh you know i'm just like playing stupid like what 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 are you talking about like we're walking to taco cabana you know and he's like all right i got you and then he just like hangs up i really didn't get a lot of detail on what happened at the taco cabana but baby daddy ivan came back with 6k yeah so he got robbed and that's my story. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, right? You're probably looking at me like, bitch, we don't want you at our house. It's not even like that. Like he kind of technically deserved it because he robbed me. Now, mind you, this was like over 10 years ago. I, to this day, am super nervous about stepping into a Dallas strip club just because I know that he will recognize me. And he was a very, very, very well-known high-end person that people like really respected so he was legit um i don't like strip clubs anymore anyway so that kind of works in my favor but at the same time that's actually one of the reasons why i don't go it's uh it's just something that happened i guess it's one of my wild crazy stories Thank you for listening. I hope it didn't change your view of me. I'm not like that anymore, I promise. There's a lot of things that have happened in my past. Um, I'm not proud of the crazy stuff that's happened. It is what it is. Life experiences make you who you are. Um, that being said, June 1st is narcissism awareness. This is the whole reason why I made my channel. I'm going to give you little pieces of stories about my life. Most of them are pretty crazy during the crazy times of my life. But I'm going I'm working up to getting to my abusive narcissistic relationship. Most of it is going to be about Ivan. I'm going to break him up into several sections leading up that week to June 1st. So bear with me. Try to enjoy some of these stories. Um I lived them. And now I can kind of look back and laugh at them or look back and be like, damn, like, girl, you was crazy. But these things really did happen to me. My mindset was totally different. Totally, totally, totally different. And I'm going to slowly go through the timeline of things that happened, why they happened, where I'm at today, how I got here. So just stick around. It's going to get Josey. Um, thanks for listening to my little tea time. And make good choices and love yourself, you guys, because you are all you really have. Thanks.